Welcome back you filthy exiles. So this is a video that everybody's been asking me to do obviously because I play a lot of Delve. So uh, anyway, let's get into uh, I guess what is Delve? Why should you play it? How do you make currency from it? Where do you start? Should you start it in campaign or after you get to what? Like what should you do? So all right, let's get into this video and let's talk about Delve and I'm just going to make this uh, like six steps or six things to keep in mind um, and we're going to talk through all those topics that I just mentioned there so let's jump into this okay so for anyone who is unaccustomed to what Delve is basically what it is is it's an infinite it's like an infinite mine and within that mine you can farm what's what are called fossils resonators you can have boss encounters you have really good loot you have ruined cities you can get precursor rings. I'm getting a little bit above this or beyond this. But basically what it is, is you basically run down with a uh, what's known as the uh, the crawler, which now has a bear MTX, which is really cool on 3.21, um, which I did buy and I'm not going to use yet because I'm saving it for the new league. Anyway, so basically you follow this crawler down and I'm just using like I've got a level 33 character here, so I don't want to go too far down. And basically you farm... Delve. You, you hit what are called nodes um, and then they have various modifiers very similar to maps and you look down in the the left right hand corner uh, sorry the left right hand corner what am I talking about you look down in the left hand corner of the uh, of the biome guide here and then basically you follow whatever mods are so some things to look out when you're delving um, are what mods you're doing on you know whatever node you're working on and then down here there are specific nodes for like you know armor nodes they've got beyond uh, or abyssal depths nodes they've got currency nodes that drop straight up currency they've got gem nodes that drop upgraded gems and whatnot uh just straight up strong box nodes uh azurite nodes which we'll talk about very shortly which is one of the best ways to make currency and that's going to be the second part like straight after this part of the video and then basically everything above. Um, so the, if, if it can be farmed, it's almost all down here. There's also a slew of particular modifiers that only delve drops, like plus one specter chests and things like that, um, that you can get that drop down and delve. League on League, this is the way that I make a lot of currency. And I've actually got a currency guide from last league if you want to know what my methodology is. But I'll give you a brief explanation of it in this video. But this is more just introducing it to you and... I guess where you go from league start and whatnot anyway that's what delve is so let's jump into the how do we make currency from it okay so how do we make currency from delve well there's a couple ways we can make currency from delve so the first we can farm down here and as you can see i am still selling currency and let's go into dnd mode now one of the big advantages of delve is it's hyper consistent currency at least the way that i see it basically think of it like mining ore in a mine like a cobalt or copper mine or something like that you're a primary producer you know you, you're you are literally getting the resource that everybody needs to craft now one of the advantages of delve is a lot of other mechanics are really peddled above delve delve is just super consistent and as far as like the everyday player like myself or anybody else that is a full-time job you can make a lot of currency really easily as you could just see literally on screen there like you know this is near the end of league and i'm selling six by four uh shattering fossils you know that that's not terrible at all um and that's one of the advantages of it but one of the things that makes delve absolutely exceptional is so there's a few different ways you can make currency the first of which is really simple you farm down in delve you hit fossil nodes and you collect fossils you break walls you 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 pick up fossils and then basically you jump dump them into your your you know in my case i got a delve stash tab and then you know you can sell them for however much uh they sell for so a couple of examples are like you know um you know loose aren't selling for much like you know serrated might sell for whatever shuttering sell for like seven chaos each um corroded sell for four uh, bound fossil sell for like two um, now this is one way that you can make currency in delve right and because you it's all about high volume low value sales so you sell them in bulk and you can make an absolute killing to give you an idea of what the market was for you know the end of this league so you know we're looking at like 
you know, perfect fossils which drop frequently, you know, self seven per fossil, sanctifieds ten glyphics, which are very sort of accessible by about depth 250, 300. Uh, self of 95 chaos, a fossil, and you just hit one node, kill everything on the node, and then you take the fossil and you can sell these like they're going out of fashion. One of the really good ways to make currency, but not the most profitable way. The most profitable way is actually by selling these bad boys called resonators. Now, you might be asking, well, what the fuck is a resonator, Jorgen? Like, you're talking a lot of shit here. Well, basically, one of the crafting mechanics in depth that comes from Delve is, uh, the use of fossils and then you use resonators and you socket socket the res the fossils into the resonator and then you craft whatever the mod is on a rare item so you re-roll that item and then based on the item level and you know if you're blocking whatever um you know different mods or whatever you get a predetermined outcome based on the type of fossil that you use so like you know for example um shattering fossils give you speed modifiers at the expense of mana modifiers or corroded's give you Physical physical ailment like bleed or chaos ailment modifiers, but no elemental modifiers, right? So that's what fossils are used for. The resonators are the medium of which you use the fossils. Now, the reason why they're so valuable is what people tend to do is when they're crafting, they'll just do like one socket resonator slams until they get the rolls they want. And like at a really rudimentary basic level, that's a really simple way to craft. And it's generally for people who self-craft, one of the best ways to get the gear that you need specifically and or craft crazy ass gear like you know you can take uh, an elder influenced item or a, or a multi-influenced item sorry my nose always acts up when i'm making videos um and then basically craft this awesome kick-ass item this is how you do it and there are modifiers that you can only get from some of these um fossils to achieve that now where we come in uh for us delvers is we're the providers of these resonators and because the market generally is pretty I guess bear because not everyone plays delve it's an acquired sort of playstyle. what tends to happen is highly uh i guess liquid currency uh drops like primitive primitive chaotic fossil uh resonators sorry are extremely easy to come by in delve by two ways they drop constantly in delve and i'll explain the second way very shortly and it's got to do with azurite but as, as you can see throughout the league, you know, they were selling for like 2.5 chaos per like resonator and it peaked at like 2.9 chaos per resonator. Now, you might bank in a single run, like, you know, say you got 20,000 sulfite going down and sulfite being this yellow stuff here that you need to collect from maps. And I'll talk about this very shortly. You might collect like, you know, I don't know, 200 resonators. And if you think about that, sell 200 resonators at two chaos a pop. That's 400 chaos, and that could be at that point in time, you know, what, one divine or two divines, and you can do that consistently, like non-stop, and that's not accounting for things like four socket resonators. But the reason why I pick on one socket resonators is because they're super easy to get. So the basically the steps you need to take here is these azurite cavity nodes. You run these nodes, you get this currency format called Azurite, which is this blue sort of thing here. And then you go to Nico after you get enough. And you go, oh, Nico always sells resonators, right? So then you sit here, you hit control shift, and bam, you just buy a shitload of resonators. So you don't have to farm these, you're farming the salt of the Azurite, and the Azurite drops in the thousands. Like the lower down you go, the more Azurite you get. And these sell for 2k a pop. So in here, I've already got 100 chaos, 120 chaos. What's that? 126 chaos just sitting in here, which is what half a divine straight away in two seconds. And I've only farmed a little bit of delve for maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. This is a really easy way early on to get the currency that you need to fund your build. Not the most profitable thing that you could do. The most profitable thing, which for people who follow my stream and I have a guide on how to take him down and everything else is actually to go and target an, a boss down in Delve called the Crystal King. And in this case, we'll see if we can find uh, a, a Crystal King that's sort of just chilling around here. Um, let's go uh, Crystal. He should spring up on here somewhere. Because I'm pretty sure I had some unkillable kings. So we'll just go have a look for him. Got a few nodes sprouting up. 
as you can see, I play an absolute lot of Delve. So Crystal King's found in Primeval Caverns, and I'll explain biomes very shortly as well. And I have killed a lot of Crystal Kings in my run this league because he's super fun to kill. Now, I'm pretty sure there was one down here. Ah, there we go. All right, so this is a Crystal King. So when we go into Delve, we want to kill Crystal King. One of the reasons we want to kill the Crystal King is because he drops a very specific amulet. And I stack up the odds of like, every 8 in 10 drops you get an amulet something like that it's a really high drop rate he also drops luminous trove cards which is for um voices jewels and there's a probability that you could get a uh a one socket voices or a three socket and sell that for a lot of currency like crazy amounts of currency but anyway the crystal king is the target so there's three types of profitable items that he'll drop and I've actually got them in my stash tab because I farm them all league long and I sell them for a lot of currency. So he drops something called All's Uprising which you can see on the screen now. Now the All's Uprising unidentified in league you can sell depending on where the league's at you could sell them anywhere up to five divine per drop early league very profitable to do this um, if you don't want to gamble but if you watch my stream my ethos is always fucking gamba because you just never know what you're going to get and in this case like a grace roll which i don't believe is worth a lot right now is worth like 10 divine at the end of league six to ten divine the reason why there aren't a great amount of these on the league is because not a lot of people go down and farm this and i don't know off the back of this video if that will change or not so there tends to be a bit of a hectic market that ru sort of rushes over itself to get these included things like and these will sell again for a lot of this league malevolence rolled um all's uprisings haste um and there's also envy and they so they were selling for like 30 to 40 divine a pop the reason why this is a special item is if you read the modifier grace has no reservation which means it's a free aura and the amulet itself has fantastic mods. So, you know, increased blast charges, life, total dexterity, total evasion. So de defense and a whole free aura and a shitload of attributes. This is why Crystal King is, in my opinion, one of the best bosses to farm. Because it has one of the best drop rates of one of literally the best build enabling items in the game. This is also going to be a lot more valuable because with the new item skill tree system, if you have a look at the, uh, and I think I'll put it on screen, if you have a look at the example, which is like the bow, it's actually got a modifier that you can get, which is 40% increased uh, effective grace. And I'm using grace as a really good example here at the cost of 25% increased mana reservation. Well, what happens if your gem can't, doesn't need to reserve mana because you're using an all's uprising? So it's a no downside 40% increase of effect of your whatever chosen aura as long as that aura matches the role on your on your all's uprising. This is why like I think this league these are going to be even more valuable than what they have been before. The other thing that you also get in Delve is uh, what are they called like I like to call them Batumbo rings but these precursor emblem rings with three of these rings in various different combinations and I'll put a link in the description can equate to a precursor emblem now how much do these precursor emblems sell for well they synergize with charges of all three different types of charges some have multiple charge capabilities some allow you for example plus one frenzy charge sells for a huge sum for frenzy charge stackers basically um really really profitable so again these drop from crystal kings and all the bosses in delve so it's really good and there's one last item referred to as the king of uh, the the crown of the tyrant, which was really good on um, guardians, uh, as in like the um, animate guardians, sorry, and basically allowed for increased elemental damage to be inflicted to enemies in the vicinity of the animate guardian, which makes it a really good item. Usually these sell for like two divine. Uh, all in all, so small currency really easy to obtain and i've got a whole guide for everything i've just spoken about by the way so i'm not going to leave you high and dry of the whole shit like this sounds great this is lucrative um so really easy to get azurite and you can you and i'll explain the best levels to to delve further down here too uh really easy to get fossils 
really relatively easy to get crystal kings now crystal kings don't spawn constantly like they that you will tend to go there's a few different stat strategies that you can play you can either go horizontally in delve and you can look for a crystal king horizontally or you can go vertically until you hit a point where it's too hard and then go vertical uh go horizontal and then farm him horizontally and you'll run into him the probability of running into him is pretty consistent um, the other way to get really good currency and just general everything currency is by farming cities, but we'll talk about that in biomes anyway. That's the ways that I generally make currency out of Delft. Now, how hard is this? There's no, there's like no investment. Usually what I do is I stack up a heap of scarabs so I can get sulfite. I natively do maps and then I get sulfite from those maps, which is then boosted up by your sulfite skill Atlas Passive Tree, which I've got a video and I'll put in the description below. And then basically you just sit back and you just play Delve, watch Netflix, chill out and absolutely make the most ridiculous amount of profit ever. It's not the biggest sum of profit that you can make in the game, but it's the most consistent because everybody crafts with Delve. Like Delve is one of the best crafting mechanics in the game. It's one of the most accessible. And so it's one of the things that you will sell this for very, like almost as soon as you put it in your stash, You'll be selling it now in the first few days the league is pretty slow after the first week when people start getting into minimaxing their early builds and moving into their secondary builds by like week three four whatever and respecking you will be selling resonators and fossils at ridiculous levels because everybody will be after to get them anyway that's basically how you make currency from delft like in a 12 minute spiel about how to make currency with delft uh, anyway let's get into how to sustain sulfide Okay, so when sustaining sulfite, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you've got your atlas tree set up properly. So I always go like the mad devotion nodes here, move up and get your gilded hordes. You're going to want to have um, also mining byproducts and also sulfite infusion. This means you're going to get the most out of your maps. Some people don't do this. I wouldn't recommend it. Like if you're like me and you're like a serial delver that just wants to spend most of your hours in delve, then this is the easiest way to do it. You don't have to. This is one way to do it, and then you can passively run maps. Not as efficient, but this synergizes with what I'm about to tell you to basically just get the most amount of sulfide possible. So the other thing you can do is you can run uh, Nico missions, which pop up. And sorry, those are these here, and I've got quite a few. And you'll get those as you complete maps and generate um, missions, and you get sulfide from that. The other thing you can do, which is more reliable, is simply just scarab your maps and what i usually do is buy a, like a stack of a hundred silver scarab polished scarabs the reason why i use polish is a super cheap alternatively if you can't get polished they usually sell for like one c uh because again delve is not the most popular mechanic for whatever reason people just find it boring or something like that i don't know i love delve um, and I just buy like 300 rusted scarabs and you usually make enough currency from delving itself to fund this really easily. And then basically you just punch in a polished or, or you, you can go three to one and upgrade and you just right click and you upgrade. Um, or, you know, you can just keep them as rusted if you want to just run lower amount of scar, you, you want to run rusted or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's up to you at the end of the day, depending on your proclivity. I'd recommend just running polished. Usually for me, if I'm at 50 to get a like 40 to 40 to 50,000 sulfite, I run fully quality maps at like T14 to T16 with polished sulfite scarabs. I make an absolute shitload of sulfite and that allows me to do like maybe six, seven runs and I'm back down in Delve. And when runs, I mean just runs like six, seven maps. And in that process, you'll be able to level up. Uh, or you know farm the maps and whatever and then you just end, end back up and delve and just it's like rinse and repeat at that point there's no like crazy mechanic or anything like that that you need to invest into there's no big setup or anything like that literally just punch a scarab in run the map get the sulfite head the fuck down and delve and get it done it's it's literally that that simple now you did you will get more sulfite if your maps are chiseled up to maximum quality and what's even better is Delve will drop an absolute shit ton of chisels. So you don't even need to worry about that because you'll be able to sustain all the shit from just running Delve and getting all the crafting mat um, stuff that you need. As you can see, 1,352 chisels just sitting chill in my stash. Like, not a care in the world. Anyway, 
that's basically how you sustain it. Really easy to sustain, low investment. You don't have to fuck around with setups or complex mechanics or anything. It's just get the scarves, run the maps, get the sulfite, get in the delve, get the profit. That's basically as simple as this mechanic is. And I'm not going to explain anything else around that because that should be pretty straightforward. All right, so now for you guys out there that are like, oh, I want to really target farm fossils because you're a bit more like savvy with Delve. You played at the last league, but you want to get better at target farming. So I'll put a link to this in the description. This is a uh, POB, a uh, POEDB. This gives you an idea of the biomes. Now, what are biomes? Well, let's explain what biomes are. So let's just go back into POE for a second and have a look at the uh, chart. So all the colors in the chart represent what is referred to as a biome. Now biomes have a specific, so it'll tell you in the left, left hand bottom corner, abyssal depths, it'll tell you frozen hollow, it'll tell you solve events. Um, and now and again, you'll run into these things called cities, which are these here. And they'll be sort of outlined in, a, in either a green outline, blue outline is primeval, and that's Crystal King territory, and you definitely want to do that. Um, and also like Ruined Chambers. There's actually a really good boss with Ruined Chambers. Um, can't remember what he is. The the Aztec, I usually I always call him Omnitech for some reason. Anyway, he actually has a chance to drop Doriani's Machinarium, which is a really good map that sells for a shitload in League. And also Ultimatum Fragments too, which you can offload for like a couple of div in the first few days and then like maybe 80, 90 Chaos every single time it drops. And it's quite frequent, frequent too as well. So. Um, th this, this is what's referred to as biomes. So biomes have different fossils that drop within them. And this explains this. So at different depths, effective depths, minimum depths, and my phone's just going off there, different fossils will drop. So for example, sulfur, sulfur vents, uh, I think it's depth, uh, depth effect 55 plus perfect fossils drop at a higher frequency. Um, you get access to Val Outposts, which are the, the Val Ruins I just showed you there, and the gold at levels at depth 63. Abyssal Cities pop up at 135. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, Abyssal Cities drop up at, pop up at 71, and Primeval ruin, Ruins start popping up at 111. Primeval Ruins of all the, all the depths are the best. Like, you will get the best currency. And there's actually a chest that comes up in Primeval Ruins, which gives you, like, a stack of Azurite, like 10, 20,000 Azurite. Usually what I do with that is then I go liquidate that to Nico and buy a heap of Resonators, and that's just, like, a, a free Divine, basically. Like, bam, Divine straight away. Really easy mechanic. Now, moving forwards, the three boss nodes that you need to look at um, to farm will be Crystal King icons, uh, the Lich's Tomb. Don't waste your time on Lich's Tombs, and these will be in Abyssal Depths. Absolute waste of time, terrible boss to farm, and no real profit from that, unless they've changed that this league, which I didn't see anything in the patch notes for that. The Grand Architect's Temple is also worth farming. So, um, let's see, uh, Ui to to Tili, whatever his name is. Um, the Blind is absolutely worth farming. Crystal King the best character to farm or the best boss to farm in delve and arguably in the game that's basically what biomes are i'll put a link in the description do i ever worry about biomes not really i look at the modifiers on the biomes as to whether or not that guides me to what i want to do and also the node of the biomes so is it a azurite cavity absolutely does is it a smuggler's stash which really isn't that cool you, as you go down lower you get access to like frozen hollow um which will be what uh can't remember what type of fossil drop for that uh you can get time time born i think it is time bound uh they'll drop glyphics 100 percent of the time you just have to basically as you push down abyssal depths will drop abyssal fossils different different types of uh, fossil nodes will drop different types of fossils and these increase in frequency the lower down you go so the lower down you go the rarer the drops are going to be off of the nodes. Um, so you'll see like a higher frequency of fossil nodes usually as you go down. Cities start to become more ap apparent as you go down. And I always recommend farming cities. Some people don't. I think farming cities is profitable. Um, if not for all the general other crafting currency that you need in the game. That's pretty much all you need to know about biomes and cities. It's pretty straightforward. So let's get into how you should level up your Voltaxic Generator. Okay, so when you go into your delve area, and I'll be honest with you, I spend a lot of time in this place, you'll see a thing called a Voltactic Generator. 
Now, what the Voltaxic Generator is, is based on the Azurite that you collect from Farming Delve, it'll dictate the, I guess, the attributes of your crawler and also your character's ability to dig deeper. Now, the lower you go, the more this scales. So as you move down to like 300, 400, 500, you'll have to keep pumping Azurite in to max out the different sort of modifiers here. But the things that I usually target first, number one, sulfite capacity, cap this out. Number two, light radius, cap this out as soon as you can. And usually I sort of switch between the two and I put one point into sulfite capacity, one point into light radius, and I just continue to alternate that as I get Azurite. Uh, sorry, Sol uh, Azurite, sorry, yeah. Um, and then Darkness Resistance is number three. Then what I'll do is I'll increase my maximum flares and my flare radius. It's really important to have a large number of flares when you go down because you never, never know when you're going to get your pants sort of caught with your pants down sort of thing um, or get stuck or something like that. And a flare can get you out of a sticky situation and can keep you alive. Um, light radius is really good to have because it means that your flares have a wider radius on the screen where the light radiates and the same applies with the crawler. So basically sulfite capacity one, light radius two, dark res darkness resistance three, and then maximum flares four, radius five, duration, I never worry about duration, I might pop a few points in there to max it out at the very end. And then number six is total number of dynamite. Now, what people don't know about dynamite is not only can you use it to crack walls, and my video that I'll have in the description explains this, it's also really useful at taking down bosses or taking down enemies that have attributes that you just are struggling with in Delph. And you can just drop the flare down by hitting seven and blow up whatever. That leads me to the next thing. Delve is a hard mechanic. And that's why I'm about to talk about what you need to do when you start your league and when you should start delving. Okay, so the number one question I get asked is, when should I start delving and what level should I delve to, right? What's the best level to farm? Well, my always response for when you should start delving is when you've gotten up to like T13, T14 maps, get your map progression done early and get your watch stones or, or void stones done early the reason being is delve is not an easy mechanic and if you take a weak character down into delve you will be walking out basically carrying your ass and you in uh, you know out with you like you are not going to have a good time in delve if you've got a weak character or a character that's like under level 85 right um lower depths you'll be okay probably down to like depth 100 you'll be okay once you start to push down lower, you're going to get done by flicker spiders and all sorts of shit like that. I wouldn't be taking squishy characters into delve. If you follow a lot of my builds, they can generally all delve to like 400 on average. Now, some people will come out with 2000 delve is the way to go. The average character, right? The average strong endgame character will make it to 700 if their defenses are good. Like that's what I've seen in benchmarking and everything else. People who are like, oh, low delve isn't anything beyond like, you know, it, low delve is like a thousand plus are full of shit. Like low delve is like 500 plus to a thousand. And then beyond that point is made blood territory, right? The guys getting to like 5,000, 6,000 are monsters and masters of delve. Um, and the guys getting to like 2,000 are really friggin' good at delve. Uh, and they've also got mirror level characters in a lot of a lot of occasions. Some don't. Yet there are different builds that work, um, but they tend to be like a handful of really XL builds that go down. You can no longer zero uh, HP build either because there's the thing called flicker spiders, and they'll just murder you and delve as well. So that's not a thing anymore. You used to be able to do that with icicle mines, and you can no longer do that. So when you should start delving is basically maybe from like 85 when you've got a bit of map completion under your belt and that's when it's a good time to delve. Now, you could arguably do it at like yellow tier maps um, and you're still going to have a fine time, but you're probably not going to go beyond 150. But hey, that's fine. Like that still means you can delve and make early currency. So, uh, you know, more power to you. Uh, so optimum depths to delve beyond that point. And... This is another question I get asked. You'll notice a lot of my uh, sort of depths that I go hard sort of horizontal on. 
begin at like 200 generally when I've got a character that's at like a good power level but not minimum max yet. 200 is a nice sort of sweet spot because you can get Crystal Kings dropping down here, you can get cities, you can get everything drops beyond like 130. Um, after 130 you get access to Crystal King. Um, and so basically like about 200 is a good starting point. 250 is better. So I got to like 300 here. 300 was like my go-to point. As you can see, like in 300, you got Prime Evils, you got uh, Time Loss, which is Glyphics itself. And that's 95 Chaos Node right there. Uh, you've got Molten Chambers, which are, was it Faceted Fossils, which sell for like 50 to 60 Chaos a piece, so on, so on. So about three, if you wanted my absolute, like what is the best step to farm at an earlier level? Um, or like just on an average basis with an average character like in league, you know, all of us that play, you know, every night for a few hours or whatever. 300 is going to be my best response between 250 to 300. 350 you can, if you can push it. If you go below 350 and your intention is to farm Crystal Kings, you're going to struggle unless you've got a really really strong character because crystal kings and every boss that goes down their health pool increases and arguably a crystal king at depth like seven to six to seven hundred is so much harder than any uber boss in the game um he doesn't hit as hard still like i've taken characters down there fully geared up at like eight at like seven to eight hundred and being one hit by a crystal king um and some of the mechanics in there are not conducive to like playing like high dodge characters that they just get absolutely destroyed. Um, it's uh, delving at that depth is a special skill. And also killing bosses is a battle of attrition, not a battle of trying to blast or nuke bosses because you won't even be able to get to the, the node. Because you, you say you have a Crystal King here and you start here. You won't be able to take an Ice Trapper down there without somebody supporting you and like an Aurobot and whatever because you're not going to make it through that node long enough. You're not going to survive before you get to the portal to get into the Crystal King's Chamber. So it's it's an interesting mechanic. But yeah, I would say 250 to 350 is your like sweet spot range. You're going to get a good amount of currency. You're going to get good access to bosses. You're going to make good profit out of that is it the most profitable delve can be absolutely not the further down you push if you can do it do it you're going to make the most amount of currency but if you can get to 250 to 350 and farm comfortably within that sweet spot that band then that's what i would recommend to delve from some people have different opinions i've played thousands of hours of delve so i would know at this stage anyway that's basically that's my opinion that's my take on it anyway Okay, so hopefully this video is sort of kept up with expectations. I know people were really looking forward to like, how the fuck do I get into Delve? And this will give you basically a, just a brain download of everything that I think about when I'm playing Delve, what I do, my tactics. There's no secrets to Delve. Like Delve is one of the easiest mechanics in the game. For newer players, it's really accessible. For console players, it's really accessible as well because it's relatively easy earlier on. Um... Is it boring? Some people find it boring. I love it because I have the thrill of the hunt of killing the Crystal King. The Crystal King and I are mortal enemies in this game. And I like to think of myself as an exterminator of Crystal Kings. And he's a fun boss to fight. Uh, other people, they're like, ah, oh, he's a shitty boss. He's actually a really easy boss. And I'll put a link in the description of how to whip his ass if you've got a tanky character in like no time. And it's actually a really easy mechanic and I hope they never change it because it's one of the most fun bosses to play ever. Anyway, if this video helped you, like and sub to the channel, follow the Twitch, and until next time, stay filthy and uh, I'll see you guys later.